Miss Torkel Bell and today I'm going to show you how I made my fantasy inspired medieval wedding dress. We decided to have a medieval time slash renaissance fair themed rehearsal dinner. We just wanted all of our friends and family to dress up and have fun. But of course, I wanted to know what did a medieval bride wear? In medieval Europe, there was no set color for a bride to wear. She would have just worn her best dress. If she was royalty, maybe she had a new dress made. That being said, it does seem like the color blue was a very popular choice for brides as it represents purity. It's a color commonly associated with the Virgin Mary. This is my favorite image that I found, and I drew some historical inspiration from it. As you can see, the bride and groom are both wearing blue, and the bride is wearing a white cape. This image is a depiction of the marriage of Philippe de Artois to Marie, the daughter of Duc du Berry, between 1470 and 1472. As I said, this was my favorite, and therefore I drew historical inspiration from it. But I didn't do it quite like the picture. I am doing a fantasy version of medieval fashion. Speaking of medieval fantasy dresses, this is my Lady of Shalott dress, which I made in the summer of 2020. It is so fun to wear, it's so flowy, I love the sleeves, and I decided to use this as a base for my rehearsal dinner dress, for my medieval wedding dress. Brides nowadays wear white, Marie in the depiction was also wearing a white cloak, so I thought, yes, let's add some white into my wardrobe, and then I'm going to have a blue uh, overcoat on top of that dress. So I went to the fabric store and found this beautiful blue velvet, and I got my McCall's pattern that I've had forever out of my stash, and I got to work. Now, of course, I cannot follow a pattern to save my life. I like to make patterns my own. Now. You saw in that pattern, it had these beautiful drapey sleeves, but my Lady of Shalott dress already has beautiful draping sleeves, so I'm only going to use the two bodice pieces and then the skirt pieces to make it a sleeveless overcoat. So as you can see here, I'm cutting out pattern piece one, which is the back, and then pattern piece two, which is the front of the bodice. And then I'm going to cut that out of my blue velvet and sew it together. The front of the bodice did have darts to help with the shaping. So here I am completing those darts, or at least pinning them, and then I'll go to my sewing machine and sew those. Here I am sewing up the pieces of the bodice. It's really easy because it's just three pieces. The front has two pieces, and the back of the bodice is one piece. So really it just took two seams and then two seams for the shoulders and then there were four darts because there was two on the front and then also two on the back and that's what I am sewing right here. Up next, we have the skirt of this over tunic. As you can see, I am just using that pattern piece to get the length of the skirt, and then I am modifying it a little bit. Instead of having more of a gore-shaped skirt where it is narrow at the top and then flares out, which is lovely, it just didn't really work with the velvet that I had, and I rather do rectangular panels for the skirt. It just worked out better for the velvet that I had. So I cut out two skirt panels and here I am connecting them. Therefore, I will just have one seam in the back of my skirt. Here I am sewing up that seam and beginning to pleat the velvet fabric. This is the first time that I'm ever working with real velvet and it was amazing, but also challenging. It's kind of slippery, it's rather temperamental, it has its own opinions about what it wants to do, and if you like press on it like at all, it has your fingerprints in it almost forever until you literally have to brush them out. Anyway. Here you can see I am pleating 
the skirt. I am directional pleating it with knife pleats that are about an inch wide, and I am going to pleat that up into the center back where then, well, it changes directions. And now I'm trying to attach the skirt to the bodice, and it's not exactly going super well. The bodice was too big, so I let out like a couple of the pleats in the center back, thinking, well, who's going to know? I didn't want to add just like a strip of velvet. Uh, and then that worked, and then it got to be the right size. So here I am pinning the bodice to the skirt. I did not sew over the pleats. I'm just going to sew everything at one time, so that's why there are 20 million pins that you see right here in this clip. Now it's time to sew everything together to sew the pleats down and at the same time sew the bodice to the skirt. Let's go. So as I'm editing through this, I saw that Gabby, my my first best soaping helper, came to give me head bubs. Uh, while I was doing this project and I realized that this was my last project with her that I did at my parents house and she just passed away and went to kitty heaven a couple weeks ago so that was really special she just passed away of old age I had her since I was in elementary school and I like to think that she had a very full life full of meowing loudly and purring even louder, lots of lap sitting and pets, and lots and lots of sewing projects. I know a lot of you have probably seen her in a lot of the sewing vlogs. Here you can see me adding velvet ribbon trim to the front opening of the tunic, of the over tunic, where it will open up onto my Lady of Shalott dress. I'm doing this as I hem the front. I decided not to line this dress because I felt like the underside of the velvet was pretty enough and a, a lining fabric wouldn't have been any prettier or made it look any better. So if you already have really nice expensive fabric that has a nice back to it, well, why not use it? So for my Ren Fair themed, well, Ren Fair slash fantasy, let's have fun dress up <laughs> uh, rehearsal dinner, I decided to do kind of a more medieval-y inspired fantasy dress. And I thought, hmm, I'm going to have like the white underdress, which is going to be my Lady of Shalott dress. And then I'm going to have the blue overcoat and I wanted a belt. It needs a belt to hold it all together. So I went online and I searched around and I found this fantastic belt from Many Moons Emporium. Uh, so let's unbox it. Let's unwrap it and see what it looks like. I mean, I know it's going to look like because I saw the picture, but different seeing it online and in person. Oh, a little thank you sticker. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, nice, nice. So, Many Moons Emporium. This is the belt. We also have some other fun stuff here. Ooh, sticky pins. Sticky pins. Want to keep your new accessory secure while wearing it? Sticky pins are just the solution to attach a sticky pin to a girdle belt at the lower back to allow a dramatic V. Ooh, yes. The drop of the girdle belt to keep it in place or keep it from bouncing, twisting as you move. Yeah, I'm going to try to dance. Need it to not, not do that. 
or a shoulder area of a chain of office or livery collar to avoid shifting and slipping. All right. Got a sticky pin for that. Oh, a sweet handwritten note. Thank you for choosing many moons, Marie. Uh, many moons, Marie. That's a fun tongue twister. Good alliteration. I greatly appreciate your business. Be well, Shannon. All right. Fantastic. Okay, business card. <gasps> Let's get to the belt. There is tape. Tape is like my arch nemesis. It's not just going to come out, is it? No, no, it is not. This is very well wrapped. beautiful. There we go. And then I uh, got it where it has this beautiful cross at the bottom. You could do a key or a cross and I chose a cross. cannot wait to try this on. Let's do it. So here it is all together. Lady Shalot Jess blue overcoat and belt. Of course I had to accessorize with the tiara as well. I was so happy with it. We had so much fun at our medieval rehearsal dinner. We even threw in some medieval traditions like kissing over a stack of sweet rolls. It was just wonderful. But one of my absolute favorite memories of the night is when Stephen's brothers came and serenaded us with a traditional Scottish folk song called Marie's Wedding. <laughs> so sweet and just made my heart so full I just we all rushed up into a group hug and I was like I have brothers now it was an absolutely great night before an absolutely another great day